Internet, we need to have a talk. Recently, I have been seeing way too many images like this, this, and, and even this. These are great photos, but they are just ruined because none of them use flat frames. You are doing such a disservice to your work and your photos if you do not use flat frames. So let's keep this incredibly short and to the point. Should you take flat frames? Yes. There is no excuse not to take flat frames. Take your flat frames internet. That's it. That's all this video is. Take flat frames. They make your images better. All right. We good? Yeah, wrap this up. Cool, let's go. Why are you still here? You need convincing to use flat frames? Okay, okay, let's make, let's, again, let's keep, this, let's keep this quick. Why should you use flat frames? What do they do? So this is a single two minute exposure and as you can see, it's got some weirdness going on there. The background looks a little bit, yeah, iffy. Here's another one. Here's another one here. You can see up the top there, the top right, there's a, there's a huge dust spot, this really big dark spot. But here's that first image again with flat frames calibrated out. Okay, we'll go, go between them. This is no flat frames and flat frames. No flat frames, flat frames. It's magic. That's it, that's it. We're done, right? Now, now you know. Flat frames are awesome. Take your flat frames. Cool. I look forward, internet, to seeing much better images on all my social media platforms going forward. Spread the word. Flat frames are awesome. Cool. Okay, for those of you still here, I'm gonna assume you want to dive a bit deeper into flat frames and let's talk about how you take them and what they actually do. So, like always, check in the description below. There's some timestamps so you can jump around. If you're also looking for more tutorials or astrophotography gear reviews, make sure to subscribe because I just finished filming how to do the ultimate power setup for your portable astrophotography rig. So stick around for that one. So let's quickly dive into what a flat frame is. A flat frame, very simply, is what your camera sensor sees if you remove the object you're trying to image. So what does that mean? That means you're looking to take a photo of nothing. You're looking to see what imperfections are in your sensor, in your telescope or your lens, uh, in your filters, anything that's part of your optical train. Every time you introduce an element to that optical train, you will lose a bit of quality or a little bit of clarity or maybe add a bit of vignetting or possibly there's some dust spots on those pieces of glass. And a flat frame will capture all of that data and allow you to cancel it out afterwards. So if you're taking a really beautiful photo at night of say the Andromeda galaxy and you take flat frames, then your processing software is able to understand what is dark in the photo because it's dark space and what is dark in the photo because maybe there's a dust spot blocking light from hitting uh, that part of the sensor and it can compensate for that. So how do you take flat frames? Flat frames are really the easiest things to take. I have two methods that I use, but I have seen people using a third method as well. So the first method that I use, and this is by far the cheapest and easiest method, is um, using a piece of paper like this. Some people use pieces of paper, some people use white um, t-shirts or bits of bed sheets or pillowcases. But the only thing that matters is that you want something that is very uniform that you can put over the front of your lens or telescope. So as you can see here, I have the Red Cat 51 and this bit of paper is actually folded and taped to the correct size that it fits nicely over the front there. And so what I do is I point the red cat up into, you know, a plain bit of sky where there's nothing obviously that's going to be shading it. I cover it in my piece of paper and I take 20 images. That's all. That's all you have to do. And that will then essentially 
so long as this front bit here is evenly illuminated, it doesn't matter if it's during the day or at night, or you've, uh, you can hold like a, a screen up or something like that to it to illuminate it. So long as you see that it's a flat illumination, that's your flat frame done. Now this method can get a little bit annoying because it requires uh, usually daylight. So most people take their flats if they're using something like this or a t-shirt or a bit of sheet. Uh, usually they take it at dusk or at dawn. So maybe they go out for the night, they set up their rig, you know, you get your rotation to where you want, you let it photograph for a bunch of hours and then in the morning, and this is what I do because I'm very lazy, in the morning I then come along and I say, okay, great, it's finished taking all the images. I put this cover over the front of the telescope. I take a bunch of images, that's my flat frames, and then I'm done for the night. Now, the downside of this is it is difficult to make changes to your imaging rig because the most important thing about flat frames is it has to be exactly the same as how you took your photos. The exposure length doesn't have to be the same, but you cannot rotate the camera. You cannot change the focus of the camera. You cannot change the filters in front of the camera sensor. The optical chain has to stay unmoved from when you were taking the photos. Because if you change the focus, then the size of the dust spots will change as the focus changes. If you rotate the camera, then the dust spots will be in a different location and then the flat frame won't work. So the most important thing is don't change your imaging train. And this method uh, limits that because you usually only use this to cut down the amount of light coming in and give you a flat surface. So it's usually done dawn or dusk. And that means you can't change it until it gets light again. So another method that I use, and uh, this again is quite cheap. This is a electroluminescent panel off AliExpress. This cost me about $35. Uh, it comes with a inverter here. And uh, this inverter just has a DC 12 volt, hopefully that's in focus there, a DC 12 volt 2.1 millimeter plug. So this just plugs straight into you know, a 12 volt battery. It's then got an on off switch on the side here. And uh, this whole screen here, this pink bit here, uh, then lights up. And you can change the brightness of this by changing the voltage that's going through. So I usually have it set to about five volts, but if I'm using a narrowband filter, I'll have it set to 12 volts because they need a bit more light coming through. And again, uh, once it's done, you then just put that over the front, hold it nice and flat, take your flat frames, and then you're done. Um, and this is great because this can work at night. Um, you could set this up on a wall, and uh, if you're using something like nighttime imaging and astronomy, Nina software, then you can even automate it so that this can get turned on and off at the time that you want it. You can set the telescope to look at it. So you could take a bunch of photos and then you know take your flat frames and then change your filter and take some more photos and continue on that way through the night. So having a source of light like this is really good because um, firstly, it's really light and cheap. It's flexible. It can just go into my backpack nice and easily so it's portable. Um, but it allows you to change your imaging chain during the night. Now the third way I've seen people take flat frames is they use something like a laptop or maybe a tablet or even a phone if it's big enough and it can cover the front of your lens or telescope. And that works fine as well. So you just need to make sure that the uh, screen does completely cover the lens and that the image you are showing on the screen is completely flat. There's no distortion of color. Sometimes if you get too close to the edge of screens, they actually have a bit of vignetting in them themselves, which our eyes won't pick up, but a camera it definitely can pick up. So be careful that your screen size is large enough to completely obscure your lens or telescope. So the next most important thing about a flat frame is that you expose it correctly. Flat frames should be exposed where you have a peak in the middle of the histogram. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like right here. This is what a good flat frame looks like. You can see there is a full histogram. This shows everything from the shadows all the way up to the highlights and everything in between. And you wanna make sure that you have a peak in your histogram right around the middle. Um, that's gonna mean that you don't lose any detail in the highlights or in the shadows. There's a nice even distribution and there's no clipping. So sometimes if you're taking your flat frames using a method like this or a t-shirt, um, you may find that the exposure has to get extremely short. Um, to compensate for that, you can actually just add some more layers. You know, this, is, this piece of paper is folded over about four times, um, so it's quite thick at the front, and that means that even during broad daylight, I can still take my flat frames because, as I said earlier, I'm lazy and don't get up too early after I've been imaging. 
Um, but similarly, if you're using a t-shirt or a bit of linen, just add multiple layers until you get the right exposure if you find that your image is becoming too short. So how many flat frames should you take? Well, I take 20 and find that works really well. Uh, you can take more than that if you like. Similar to most calibration frames like darks and biases, when you double the amount of the frames you're taking, you halve the amount of noise coming out of it. Um, and so you can definitely keep going, but I find 20 is a really solid number to take. It gets rid of the vast majority of the issues. The images look really nice and flat afterwards. And you could, if you wanted to halve the noise again, then you'd have to go to 40 and then 80 and then you know 160. And, and so it becomes exponentially more difficult to get rid of the tiny amounts of noise at the end. Whereas 20 is still a very good number. And finally, let's finish this video off like all good videos should be finished off with an image comparison. So here we have a fully integrated image without flat frames. And it looks okay. But here is that exact same image fully integrated with flat frames. And it just... You've put so much effort into your photos, taking them, editing them, do this one little last bit and you'll really be able to reap the rewards. That's it for today. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, hit the like button. And if there's any specific tutorials that you would like to see, make sure to leave a comment down below. My name's Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and thanks for watching.